Hey, welcome to Be Well. I'm Erin, and this is my friend Bridget. This is our 11th episode of Be yep. Well. We've been going around the circle of life, and today our topic of well-being to be well is relationships. And this is a really touchy one because we really could go in a lot of different directions. So we're going to try and stay focused, make the main thing, the main thing. Um, but relationships in regards to, um, people that we keep the closest to us, I think is what we're really going to hit on today because we don't need to worry about, you know, I'm friends with them on social media and blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. That's not a friend. That is a contact. And so we want to go right off the bat, just establish a boundary with what the, what the term relationship truly means. And, and for me, relationship with someone who I come in contact with on probably a daily basis, if not every few days. So Bridget and I have a very close relationship. We've been friends for going on five years now. And if I don't see her at the gym, at some point, I'm probably sending her a text message or a voicemail or something along those lines, because she is someone that I hold near and dear to my heart. And um, so I have a relationship with her. We've, we've established a relationship. And so whether it's your a, a relationship that's been established through your DNA or through through friends or through other families, a social circle that you're part of that is the relationship status we are going after today. So Bridget, why don't you hit us up on why relationships are so important when it comes to our being well and why it's on that circle of life. So, uh, just to acknowledge what you said right back at you. It is weird. Like if you don't text, you know, there's certain people in your life, if you don't hear from them, you're like, Oh, what is going on? Or, you yeah. know, you worry about them or you worry about their children, just like they're your own. So, um, but I think it's uh, relationships as a whole. There's not one person in this world who doesn't have a relationship with somebody. Yeah. And just like you said, it, it may be a friend. It may be significant other. It may be your church family. It may be the family that you made yours because, you know, you may have lost your family. So I think it's important for us to pay attention to the type of relationships we have with people. Mm -hmm. Are they healthy? Are they unhealthy? And if they are unhealthy, what do we need to do to either a look at them to see if they can be a healthy relationship or B is it time to let that, that specific relationship go because it's holding you back. It's bringing you down. It's um, you know, it's, it does not do anything for you right. if it causes you worry if it causes if you're constantly wondering if you hurt that person's feelings or you know um did you say something wrong or you know if you're the one calling and there's no reciprocation those types of things it shouldn't be a lot of work it's it's probably not a relationship to have and and I know I've been there I'm sure you have been there it's yeah. just um when it gets to that point it's almost exhausting yeah to you and it it sends you into a different mind state where you don't need to be when there's plenty of people that will uplift you and hold you accountable and you know stand by you during the tough times and praise you when when you're doing something they feel you've done something well or be proud of you or like I said you know if if I need to stop and drop everything because you needed help with with Edison I would do that you know because he's an important kid in my life. And, and I know the same for myself. Um, you would do that. And I have other friends that would do that, that would just drop everything to, to help. So I think it's important that we surround ourselves with people like that. Yes. So we do stay well in our mind. And then, then that also helps physically in the end, quite honestly, you yeah. know? Yep. Yeah, we were in our innermost being, we were actually created for mutuality, not for things being one sided. And so when we we enter into relationships, I think our hardest of hearts is searching for that mutuality, because when we have mutuality, it's it's that healthy give and take back and forth 
that keeps the, bo the, the boat from not rocking so much, you know? But when we have that one-sided relationship where it's all, all give, all give, but you're not receiving, that's when wounds, you know, happen, or even, you know, if, if we hang on for so long, it then becomes traumatic. We start making um, rash decisions based off of our emotions rather than why am I hanging on in this relationship when I know it's not actually leading me down the right path? And I think, you know, from speaking from personal experiences, I know that there's relationships that I've held on to because I thought for sure this person was supposed to be a part of my life. And I didn't want to let them go because I had invested so much. I actually created a soul tie with this person. And then to be like, I, I don't want to let that go, even though I wasn't getting anything out of them. But right. it, was all, it was a time in my life where I was pouring out so much of myself. My body started to kind of waste away. I was losing weight very rapidly. I had a hard time keeping it on or putting it on. I had a terrible time uh, sleeping. I would have bad dreams. I was very unhappy. And so you can see how hanging on to that unreciprocal relationship actually led to a physical um, decline in my health. And then once I cut that relationship off, um, there was grief. There was sorrow that I needed to work out and let go of. And there was some unforgiveness that I needed to release forgiveness in. Um, then I feel like the light of the light of my life kind of came back to me and I started to feel better and less worn out and less worn down. And I could give more of myself to other people because um, I no longer was giving so much of myself to this one person that wasn't reciprocating back to me. And that's just from my personal experience in releasing relationships that are not reciprocal. Um, the other thing is, you know, are we doing a great job of reciprocating back to our friends? And, you know, and for us in, in a health and in a professional services industry, I think sometimes we have a hard time. We give a lot right? We're constantly giving advice, we're giving coaching, we're, we're building people up, we're encouraging. And then we like get to the end of the day and we're like, oh, I could really use some encouragement, you know? <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's reciprocating back with the people who are actually feeding us as well. And just being good stewards of those relationships, just like we would our time or our finances or, or any of our resources. Um, so do you, is there anything like for you, how, is there any experiences in your life where you saw or experienced, uh, toxic relationships that led to, um, you know, a decline in some way, shape or form in your health? Oh, I, I would say so. I would, you know, if you, the, you surround yourself with certain people you're going to most likely take part in what what they're doing so you know there I I be completely honest you know if you spend weekends with people who like to hang out at the bar you're going to hang out at the bar with them you yeah. know and that that has has happened and you know as we had fun that's fine do I feel well after no you don't or you know people who are constantly these these are this is a small thing but like if you're constantly with people I can remember well for example growing up my mom if she ever reads or watches this don't don't be mad at me but <laughs> um you know there's always sugar in the house yeah and it always was hidden in the microwave just nuts you know so it wouldn't be sitting on the counter but all the cinnamon rolls all the donuts everything was and it would stay fresh in there okay. you know and it led to I uh, always had a tough time with uh food you know for the longest time it was it was sugar and then the longest time is chips and that but that's how my family was you know and finally I have gotten to the point where I don't have I don't need that stuff yeah. you know I don't want that stuff you know every night at dinner we'd have Pepsi and it was just the way it was and yeah. I don't I don't need that now thank goodness and yes I do feel better um 
do I always have, do you always have something to work through? Absolutely. But like, it's, that's a, that's a good example of, you know, those are relationships that we don't even have control over. It's just what we were brought up in. Right. And that's just, I'm sorry, that triggered my mind in one of the classes because we don't have control over how our parents bring us up. Right. You know, when we're younger, we don't have control over what they buy. We don't have the money. We don't have, so we eat what we're given, of course, but it is our job later in life, if need be, to develop a different type of relationship with food. Yes. For our kids, you know, because that is another, it's not a physical relationship with people, it's with food. And we do have so many boy, that just really morphed into something different, but it does make you think like we do have unhealthy relationships with food. Yeah. We have unhealthy relationships with drinking and uh, sugary drinks. It doesn't even matter what type of bad drink, but we do have unhealthy relationships with that. Yeah. And I think it's important to acknowledge that and then change it if you can or to the best ability. And if you can't then find somebody who will help you through it, you know, Yeah. I think that's such a good, no, but that's such a good analogy is, you know, because, um, just like now as adults, we have a choice with what kind of relationships we are going to interact with or surround ourselves with. We also have the ability to choose what kind of relationship with food we're going to have. And so your relationships with your family established a way of eating that carried on to your adulthood. And so we, you know, we pick up behavioral patterns and how to relate with one another based off of how we were up, you know, brought up and not everyone's brought up in a perfect home. Not everyone's brought up, you know, in a dysfunctional family either. So it's how, how has our childhood shaped the way we, we relate to one another and how has our childhood shaped how we relate to food, um, And so I think that's a great analogy because relationship isn't just relationship with people. It's relationship with food. It's relationship with our time. It's relationship with our finance. It's relationship with, um, you know, with the Lord, if you have a relationship with him or not. And so, you know, the, the whole point of what is, what is a healthy relationship in my book, it's one that's reciprocating. And so if, if I'm choosing foods that are good for me, then it's going to reciprocate health back to me. But if I choose foods that do not feed my body well, then I'm going to end up in dis-ease. Just like if I choose to have a relationship with someone who is toxic and I put life into them, but they're not giving any life back to me, eventually it's going to wear me down. And so we, it's a very, it's a great mirror image of you know, what we surround ourselves with is essentially what we do become. It's like that, and that it's like that, um, you know, that story about the frog in the pot of water that eventually starts to boil. And then he doesn't even realize that he's being cooked, you know, right. because he just, he just assimilates with the water that's around him. That's boiling. He's just sitting in it. And right. so, um, I think that's, I think that analogy is spot on that, how we choose to, to interact with people, the type of people we choose to interact with essentially is how we become. So if you want to become a healthy individual, maybe you should start hanging out with healthy individuals, probably not obsessive compulsive ones, but like, you know, <laughs> people who have a good, um, routine or habits set up in their life that you're like, I would love to have that a part of my life, not in a comparison or jealousy kind of a way, because that really can trigger a whole other, I mean, that's a whole other topic is, you know, offense and jealousy or comparison. But, um, you know, we all like to try and follow someone that we want to look like or that we want to be like. And so what are we chasing after? Maybe, maybe there's someone that we see, but you're like, oh my gosh, they're in such good shape. I'm never going to get there. Well, look back at how they got started, you know, and start surrounding yourself with, with people who essentially are going to take you further in and higher up and not just constantly around the mountain, because we end up chasing our tail and we get exhausted and worn out. And then we're no better off than we were when we started. So I think that's, I mean, I think that's a great analogy. Um, 
what else in your class in, in terms of relationships was something that you thought, um, you know, that you want to share with our viewers. That's kind of a, it's a low hanging fruit. Like this is the one thing that you can change, but it's going to make a big impact. Honestly, I think we hit on most of the, or, you know, the overall point is, you know, you just, you really do have to surround yourself with what's going to promote better relationships in whatever facet of life, you know, and if it's not, it's going, just like you said, it's going to cause dis-ease, which is disease and inflammation and stress and, you know, and then it's just a trigger for everything else to kind of come crumbling down around you because it is true just like you said it's like I said it's food it's 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 finances it's it's I mean we have a relationship with so many things yeah that you just have to it's it's kind of being cognizant and sometimes it's so hard to even realize um you know where you might be stuck in Mm -hmm. in a bad relationship um, yeah. just like that, you know, the finances book that we read, yeah. like just reading that, it kind of opens to your eyes just to a different view. Like, you know, everybody always wants to have their finances in place, but it just might be this one little part where you're like, Oh, I didn't realize they had a, such a bad problem with that. Maybe I should work on that, you know? Yep. So, but it's, it's just a matter of, um, finding what will support you in, the positive relationship in that aspect of your life, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, and I think and it, it is truly important to yeah. have a good, try to have a good relationship with most things. It's not perfect all the time, right? But, you know, uh, reground yourself and surround your people who will help ground you if need be. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. You know, and the reason why relationships is such, imp- is such an important part of our well being is because, you know, we had talked about that, um, you know, we were created for mutuality, but, you know, God's word also says that it's not good for man to be alone. And the re mm-hmm. one of the reasons I believe that is, is because of what you're talking about. Like we tend to have blinders on and we have kind of one way vision when we're on our own. But if you bring in someone from the outside who truly cares about your well-being, they're going to they're going to see that maybe you're not going in the right way. And they're going to say they're going to speak truth and love to you. And it's like, you know, Bridget, I love you so much, but I see this area in your life that it could be a danger to you. Um, You know, do you want to talk about it or like maybe you should make a tiny bit of an adjustment? I wish talking about that in regards to people and food would be just more normal. Like we're so, we are so quick to be like, I'm on a diet, you know, which means you're eating healthy food. Can you imagine if we like flip the script and we're like, Oh my word, I'm eating all cinnamon rolls all weekend. Like, like how can we, (laughs) why, why is it such a, why is it such a faux pas when we see someone binge eating on food that we don't call them out on it, but the second they sit down with a plate of lettuce and you're like, oh, are you on a diet? You're right, exactly. Yeah. I'd rather say, We're so worried about are hurting you going to have a heart attack next like- week? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you trying to become diabetic? That's probably not we- truth in love, but you know. Right. I wish we could turn it around and all the healthy food is just, you know, oh, you're yeah. eating your nutrition. And then if you eat 10 million donuts, oh, you're on a diet, you know, can you imagine? Yeah. If, we, but all that, I don't know, is like, you know, <laughs> we're we have a whole can it's of not worms. good like, for us to be alone because we need people to see our blind right. spots. We need people right. to say, yo, right. you've had nine pieces of pizza. Yeah. Do you, do you need a 10th? You know, you've, you've <laughs> gone three weeks on this like yo-yo cycle with this person in your life. I mean, you probably should just cut them off. Yeah. You know, like if right. they're causing you this much stress, um, maybe it's time to move on or. And some people might see that as tough love, but it is true. It's love, you know? Yes. It's what it, it's what it is. They just want the best for you. If it's the person that's building you up, not, not with cruel intentions, that's not, or self, that's not love. Um, 
Correct. So if it's truly the people that stand by it, then, you know, it's, and you know what, if you love them just the same, you'll be like, you know, you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and that, and that's the other part of it too, is like when you're in a, in a really, in a mutual relationship, you will also receive correction with a teachable spirit. Yeah. Right. But if we think we know it all, we can't have a teachable spirit. We'll keep walking in the way that we're going and we will end up stumbling and falling. But, you know, relationships were designed by God. He created Adam. He didn't need to create Eve, but he was like, man shouldn't be alone. So I'm going to create a partner for him. And Mm -hmm. that partnership is what keeps things level and allows us to work together so that we keep walking forward in life, because I don't want you to stumble and fall and you don't want me to stumble and fall. But if I'm offended by you not wanting me to stumble and fall, then I'm going to stumble and fall. And that creates a divisiveness. Um, The other thing with relationships that I want to touch on too, though, is, you know, like you had said, and what we already had talked about a little bit with, um, you know, pouring into someone, but not receiving anything back, you know, part of a healthy relationship is setting up boundaries. So too, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I probably could call you at any time of, of day and night. Um, but there's other people in our life that if it's someone that we're discipling or that we're walking along in, like I, I need to set up a clear boundary. Otherwise I'm going to get walked all over. And that's right. also not a healthy way to relate with one another um, because then you become right. a doormat rather than a doorway. And so, you know, relationships is, you know, oh, there's so many things to doing it, you know, to doing it right. Well, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. If it's exhausting, it's probably time to take a break. And if it's causing you more stress than happiness, you probably just need to cut it off. And so those would be right. like, the three areas where, you know, is there joy and reciprocation in my relationship with this person? Is there unneed stress? Do I feel like I'm being used? Well, then you probably need to just get rid of it. Or is this someone that I don't mind pouring into them, but I need to set a clear boundary that if there isn't reciprocation, then this is, this is as far as I can go with them. Um, Right. So we don't need to overcomplicate it. But at the same time, it's, it's a part, it should be a part of our life. And, you know, when we do establish those mm-hmm. clear boundaries and we, when we do say like, yeah, I'm just not going to let you use me anymore because it's causing me more stress and unhappiness than anything. Those are, those are good things. That's how we stay healthy in our relationships. Right. So, um, and it's kind of the same way with food. Like we, we have really healthy food on one side and we have really bad food on the other end. And obviously this food is going to produce life and give life and help us feel energetic and repair and rebuild and regrow at the cellular level, all all the things that we need. And then we have this food over here that's just completely toxic and we don't need it in our life. And then we have like the middle road where we have some food that could it be toxic? Yeah, but I'm going to create a boundary for it so that it's not creating chaos and dis-ease in my body if I take it on too much and I let it rule my life. Um, so I'd right. like that you are like, you know, we're talking about relationships with people and relationships with food is so synergistic, you know, the, work, <laughs> the two work like so in tandem with each other, but making healthy relationships and healthy food, the norm. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. We wouldn't need as much self-love all the time if we would love others well and create healthy boundaries and decide that we want to do what's best for both parties involved, whether it's stay in it, push through the hard things, receive some truth and love and some correction, or just recognize that it's just not, not something that you need to have a part of your life anymore. Right. So do you have anything else you want to say about relationships and health and all that good stuff? It's going to lead right into our next topic. Yes. The last one, Mm -hmm. home environment, environment. Yeah. And, you know, relationships and relatability always comes back down to having 
you know, the confidence in who you are as a person and what you have to offer people. And not that you have it all together and not that I'm like Miss Perfect or anything, but the more secure I am in my identity and my giftings and my callings, actually the better friend I can be to people. And I, so, I agree. you know, knowing who you are and knowing whose you are is the first step into having healthy relationships with other people. Right. I agree. And so that will all tie in to our topic next time, which is, yeah, home environment, which is all about relationships. Yes. Could be so many relationships. Different, <laughs> yeah. You have a household of five different people, you know, including yourself. And so there's a lot of different dynamics there to, to kind of sort through and figure out. And um, so we'll talk about that next time. But for today, um, hopefully some things on relationships spurred your, your interest and um, gets you thinking a little bit differently about how to relate to each other and where to set up some clear boundaries, but also just to maybe cut some things off in your life that are no longer serving you um, on the path of being well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you.